Welcome, uh, Allesammen. Been meaning to do this video for a while. For anyone looking to get into paganism or just anyone interested in Norse mythology at all, there are just two books that we can kind of call our primary sources, and that is the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. Um, I'm going to speak about what these are for the beginners uh, that are maybe new to all this. Um, most of you watching the channel are, are already advanced and, and know uh, what I'm about to tell you, but I'll give some things that maybe even you don't know yet. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, how lucky we are to remind us all that we have just these two sources preserved. I know it's not much and it doesn't give us a lot of the answers we're looking for, but just those two sources are a hundred times more than most other pagan religions have around Europe. The Celtic, the Slavic, the Baltic, Finnish, Sami, they have almost nothing. Just about the only pagan religions uh, in Europe that actually have a good preserved record of their mythology is the Greeks and the Romans. Now, even for them, this is very difficult because for 3,000 years now, their location has been at the very center around the Mediterranean of this culture of book burning, censorship, erasing of history. So it's hard to know what we can trust even with those. Uh, Norse is the same exact thing. And this brings us to the Prosetta. The main thing about the Prose Edda is that it is written by a Christian historian 200 years after pagan times. And the way the Prose Edda is written, it's kind of like a mythical fantasy book and the author, Snorri Sturluson, writes in a way where he is, you know, telling the myths uh, of the old gods and kind of mocking his own ancestors uh, for believing these ridiculous things. And the only reason that Snorri even wrote this book in the first place is to preserve the skaldic poetical language uh, that was used by his pagan ancestors. He even says that in the first few pages. All of that is very true, um, and it's not 100% reliable because of this. But I have a couple big problems with the mainstream scholarly opinion on all these things. My main problem is they say Scandinavia became Christian in the year 1000, and Snorri wrote the Prose Edda in the year 1220. So because of that, they call it a secondary source. And uh, that's a bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, uh, and I expect people with PhDs to have better knowledge of the sources, but unfortunately a lot of them don't. Scandinavia, yeah, it's true, they had their first Christian kings in the year 1000, but paganism was still the majority religion in Scandinavia over the next hundred years for the most part. We have many sources for that. Wars were even fought for it. I've done other videos uh, about that. Towards the year 1100, you know, Christians probably started to become the majority, um, but it wasn't till around the mid-1200s where they actually started to make a legal effort to crack down on paganism. Uh, and that's where we find all of these laws put into place um, by King Magnus Lagerböte, for example, forbidding uh, many pagan practices and beliefs. So um, the mid-1200s, paganism was still alive in Norway even, and Iceland was even more remote and free from this. So at the time of Snorri Sturluson, he wasn't writing about the pagan religion of his ancestors from 200 years ago. He was more like writing about the pagan religion of his neighbors on the other side of the valley, something like that, who were maybe doing some shady things on the full moon. It was definitely rare, but Snorri would have definitely uh, uh, known some still living and practicing pagans at that time. So Snorri was a Christian, but he did have genuine interest and very good understanding, actually, of the pagan religion. So I definitely don't call this a secondary source, a primary one. Uh, that's what it is, in my opinion, on the Norse religion. The problem is, though, uh, Snorri was genuinely interested in the truth and preserving this beautiful religion and culture, but the church uh, at the time um, did not, so his hands were tied. Picture you were Snorri, working in, in the 1200s. You were a historian and political leader tasked with uh, writing history and other documents. Uh, you want to write down and preserve as much as you can, um, but you have a boss who every time you start working on it, he's looking over your shoulder, making sure that you don't write anything too pagan. And you knew that if you wrote anything you know, challenging the Christian narrative of the time or making sense of paganism, you would be fired from your job, lose your political status, and the book would have been destroyed anyway. So that's what you have to remember reading the prose edda. Uh, Snoji uh, really did have a good knowledge of paganism, and he made a big effort to preserve what he could. 
but to do so, he had to write it down in a way that kind of made it sound too ridiculous to believe. He had to avoid writing anything in there that would make uh, paganism sound logical you know, or believable. He couldn't give any clues to the real meanings of the myths or else it would be destroyed. So for the cringe pagans who read the prose Edda like they were literal events and the gods were superhuman characters, um, worshipped like idols, you're doing exactly what the book was meant to do to make our ancestors sound like a bunch of idiots that believed in stupid things that defy all the laws of nature and physics and things like that. Maybe it's just me, but if a five-year-old can come in and take apart the religion that you say you believe in, like the earth being created by the flesh of a giant and the brains being used as the cloud and the bloods of, as the ocean. You know, if a five-year-old can figure that out, that it's probably not a literal event that really happened, then I think our ancestors figured that out too. And that brings us to the Poetic Edda, or Codex Regis. Um, this is the book that they didn't want us to have. The Poetic Edda is dated to the 1200s, so it's written about the same time as Snorri, uh, but uh, because of the poetical style and language, most of the poems in there can be dated to long before that. The earliest ones actually uh, around the 800s we think they're from. So these uh, are the poems written in pagan times by pagans for pagans. Yeah, some of them were maybe written a little bit later on and have some Christian influence, but for the most part, they're definitely uh, pagan compositions. Uh, but again, the actual text we have of it was written around the time of Snoddy. Thing is, though, it was hidden away for more than 400 years, and it popped up on a farm in Iceland in the 1600s. Whoever wrote it in the 1200s knew that it would be destroyed, so they hid it away in order to preserve it. Uh, this one is the real deal. This is as close as we're going to get to a pagan Bible. Another problem with this one, though. When it was found in the 1600s in Iceland, it was sent off to Denmark to the king as a gift. Uh, by the time it got there, Eight pages were torn out of it. Of course, those are probably the things that make sense of it all and give us the key to understanding the true pagan beliefs. For some reason, the people at the time felt a need to tear this out. Why? <laughs> you know, who knows? But not something good. Um, if you like conspiracy theories, the history of pagan religion uh, is filled with them all over Europe. And it's totally true. There's no theory about it. For 2,000 years, there was an all-powerful organization that controlled every bit of information and was trying to silence anything that challenged their narrative. Hmm, sounds kind of familiar to something today, doesn't it? So just be aware that the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda and any other primary source pretty much of pagan religion around Europe has been subject to censorship. The worst part of it is not even what they censored and what they destroyed in the literature. The worst part for us is actually what they did allow to be written, and what they did allow to be preserved, and the fact that it can send us the complete wrong way looking for answers if we let it. Christian authors in the Middle Ages, they write about pagan religions from a monotheistic worldview. This is what they did with linear chronology, black and white afterlife, taking the religious texts as literal events, treating the gods and deities like physical, superhuman beings watching over and judging us all powerful, when in reality, any pagan religion from around the world is exact opposite to those things. And this is the number one mistake I see pagans making today. They're trying to force their uh, maybe Christian previous views of what they think a religion should be, and they just end up substituting the Norse gods in place of their Christian ones and practicing the same religion pretty much. If you want to do that, just be Christian, okay? It's cool. I respect that. Respect people of all beliefs. People need to believe whatever they want. But don't go mixing religions and forcing them on each other and creating some kind of mongrel or religion that you just made up. That is not the way paganism is supposed to be done. So that's all for today. I'll give you two tips before I finish and let you go start reading the Eddas. The Prose Edda, read it for exactly what it is. A mythological fairy tale book. It's great, and the actual myths are going to be reliable for the most part, but just realize that this book was written specifically to make the pagan religion sound ridiculous and make our ancestors sound like a bunch of idiots who believed in all these things.
you know, were there maybe some dumb people, uh, like the regular average person in the Viking Age, who actually believed these myths were literal events? Yeah, I'm sure there were. I see some of you guys in the comments are saying things like this. Yeah, I'm sure there were some people like that back then. We are not trying to strive for this dumbass understanding of paganism. We are trying to reach the understanding that a Gothi or religious leader of the time would have, not a village idiot's understanding of the religion. So that's the number one thing we're trying to uh, understand there. Um, second tip is about the Poetic Era. This one, of course, is far more reliable, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and these were the poems that pagans, you know, were telling each other and how we can really get some answers. Uh, but please, please um, translate the names of the gods and deities. If you read just a generic, basic translation of the Poetic Edda, um, this is going to also sound like a bunch of crap to make our ancestors sound like idiots. But if you translate the names of the gods, you will see immediately how the myths are symbolic, metaphorical, representative of certain processes in nature, the universe, our, our own bodies and spirits. There's manifestations and personifications of all these things. Does that make our ancestors atheist? Absolutely not. That makes them animist. The same beliefs that every single human had if we go back far enough. When we take, for example, the two gods in the Norse myths, Sol and Moni, uh, of course they are symbolic for the sun and the moon, that's what their names mean. But you have to understand when our ancestors looked up at the sky and, and saw the sun and the moon, they didn't just see a burning hot lump of gas and a cold rock like we do today. They looked up at the sky and they saw actual beings uh, that had a spirit, consciousness, feelings, even traits and characteristics. And this is the same with every single uh, god and, and deity in our myths. Some of them are more complicated than others, but they are all symbolic and they all have a very specific spiritual energy to it. Even natural phenomena um, and, and functions of the world do. This is what animism is all about. And, and again, translate their names and you will start to see that. You can get an Old Norse dictionary, but I actually just heard um, uh, news that uh, my favorite translation of the Poetic Edda is back available uh, by Maria Kvilhari. She's great. Um, it was out of print for a while, but it's available now. If I can find a link, I'll maybe put it down below. Uh, it's not the full Poetic Edda, uh, but it's two books that take m all, all the main important poems and even some excerpts from the uh, prose edda as well. So definitely recommend that. That's the only one that I've seen that translates the gods' names. And then there's, of course, the prose edda. I carry this one along with other books on my online shop now. You can check it out. <laughs> I've, I've gone through a lot of hassle, and I was a bit of an asshole <laughs> to make sure I can get these books at a low cost so I can give these uh, to you guys at the lowest cost or at least equal to anywhere else you would get them uh, online for a new copy. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, but that's all for this video. Vi ses nästa gång.